Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back. We are back to break down this three game slate. Nice little easy, short little three game slate. We got the Pelicans, Wizards, Kings, Sixers, and Cavs, Bucks. Uh, decently easy slate to break down. It'll be a quicker video than yesterday, but we did kill it yesterday. Uh, I'll go over my lineup and all of that different stuff in a video coming out later. I accidentally, I absolutely crushed the tournament, so I'll go ahead, I'll post that up. Uh, it was with my cash line, so I'll show that and everything, uh, and I'll do that later. I'll show my FanDuel and my DraftKings line, so uh, that'll be up in later in the day, as well as my breakdown of my early look at the NFL for this upcoming week 16, so keep an eye out for that. But guys, let's get into this. We'll start out with the New Orleans Pelicans and the Washington uh, Wizards. So for the Pelicans, let's start off with the guards. We got Drew Holiday, Rondo, and Moore. Those are the only ones that I'm looking at. Uh, Tony Allen, still out. Uh, and Jameer Nelson, he's had a couple of good games. We'll take a quick look at here. He's had some games that would have been good for value. Um, but I, I, I doubt I go there or touch that. But it is an actual pretty good look for him. Uh, I, it's not a bad idea to take a look at him. But seven assists. Per is a little bit asking a little bit much, but 15 points on this slate may be enough to get it done from Jameer Nelson. So he's maybe worth a cash look, maybe a little bit of a tournament look. Um, tonight I'm playing, I believe, probably is it like 80? I think I'm I'm in for like 80 cash. Um, no, let me see here. I'm in for about 50% cash. 30% GPP, 20% satellites, I think, is what I'm doing. There's a $16 MMA satellite, so, uh, to the 333, so I'm definitely in that. I wish that would have been last night, because I would have taken it with ease, probably. Um, so I'm in for that tonight, so I'm going a little bit riskier, uh, but I'll make to note the real cash plays. Rondo has really suffered since Anthony Davis has come back. Um, he had these gigantic games, uh, against Houston and Philly, um, <clears throat> but these last couple of games, I mean, 27 may get it done on this slate, don't get me wrong, but overall, I don't know, you're not going to, the the expectation is probably more closer to the 27-ish range than it is to like a 38, but Rondo has the 40, 50 point upside, but I doubt I go there tonight. Um, yeah, I just doubt I go there tonight. <clears throat> Moving on to forward, we've got Three guys, we still got Etwan Moore to consider, but other than that, it comes down to Boogie and Brow. Uh, those are the only two I'm looking at, coming in at 10-1 and 10-7. Uh, Brow, I don't know, I just don't play Anthony Davis. At 10-1, none of his games would have killed you. This one against OKC would have, but he played 45 minutes, so that's not like... I, I, I don't know, I'm not going to expect 45 minutes. I expect closer to the 36 than I do the 44 that he did against Denver. Um... And he really needs 60 to 65 to really kill you on this slate with as many studs as there are. So I won't be touching uh, Brow, but you could go there if you want to. Uh, Boogie, once again, another guy I probably won't go here. Um, he doesn't really have this 81-point upside tonight. Um, once again, he needs 60. He needs closer to 65 to really kill you tonight. Uh, that's under the assumption of, that everybody else performs. Um, up to 5x value for the studs. We'll go 5x value for the studs. Uh, following that, Boogie would need 65 to really kill you. Uh, and he hasn't gotten 65 at all, other than the 40-point game and the 38-point games um, against the Kings in the revenge game where they gave him 30 shots, and then against the Nuggets. Um, I believe both of those were without um, Anthony Davis, so those don't really count. Okay, so moving on from that, we'll just... We'll lay it out here. It's Drew. I didn't really talk about Drew Holiday. I do really like Drew Holiday at 7-1. Uh, he needs 35 to meet value, which he has been doing consistently. So I do really... I have a lot of interest in Drew Holiday tonight. I think a balanced lineup is a really good idea tonight with the uh, with the amount of value uh, that's not on the slate. There's really just Frank Mason and uh, Deer and Fox, which we'll get into later. But I'll show you here. We'll go a little bit... Um, I'll build a lineup, a balanced lineup here, and I'll show you what it kind of looks like. I'll leave two spots open, so DraftKings. Uh, obviously, I don't get a lot of views, but I, I'm just, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave it open for your interpretation for the last two uh, spots. But moving on to the Wizards, we've got 
Otto Porter that's doubtful. He's questionable, um, but he sat out of shoot around, and he's highly questionable is what I've gotten out of this. Is he's highly questionable, more leaning towards doubtful in my opinion, uh, which moves Kelly Oubre and Mark... Um, and Mike Scott into the conversation. I'm not gonna go to uh, to Keith. I'm just I'm just not gonna do it. Uh, I, I'm not taking a four pointer or a six pointer tonight. It's just not happening. Um, yeah, maybe he gets to 25 or 30, but I don't know. Nah, it's not worth the risk to me. Um, I'm more of a cash player anyway. Like I do I do play some GPPs, but I am more of a cash player than the cash player in me. I can't play Mar Markeith Morris. Uh, Mike Scott has been shooting lights out, but I might be go back one more night, Mike Scott. One more night. Give me one more night. 9 of 10 and 8 of 14, um, and four of those misses were from three-point range. Uh, but he's been shooting, I mean, look at those. 100%, 100%, 82%, 57%, 57%, 57%, 90%. I mean, he it's, it's impossible for him to uh, to keep that up here let me put that on snooze all right uh but for one more night can, can we get can we get a peak mike scott for one more night i think we could so i have some interest in him but he won't make this lineup but uh kelly Ubre, my other option um i love playing Ubre when wall was out um and Ubre seems like a safe 25 ish points um i guess maybe he's a safer 20 points we'll say that 20 points safe floor but um, we'll have to see what the Porter, if Porter is out, I'm definitely going to play Oubre. If he's in, it gets a little bit dicey, uh, at the guards, you got John Wall still under 9k. So he's going to get locked into this lineup as well. Um, comes in at 8,800. He put up a 43 points in his last game, played 32 minutes. Um, I don't believe he's on a minutes restriction anymore. I think they're just holding him on lower minutes. Um, I would assume here... He's been going. He's been trending up. Maybe he gets 36 tonight. It's two days later. Um, I don't believe they might play tomorrow night. Um, if they play tomorrow night, maybe they play him 38 minutes tonight and then rest him tomorrow. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but I'm going to expect around 36 minutes from Wall. That might be a little bit, a little bit overzealous, but that's my expectation for John Wall is 30 is 36 minutes. Uh, at the guard, other than him, uh, pretty much just Bradley Beal. Uh, Beal has seen, he's kind of like uh, Clay Thompson. Um, he sees a huge bump uh, to his uh, performances with Wall in the lineup. Uh, he plays much better with John Wall than he does without John Wall. I mean, he did have some good games without John Wall, but uh, he's much more consistent with John Wall. And for 7,700, he's another guy I would look to put into uh, a GPP lineup like this. Um, maybe you take Wall out uh, and put in Beal. And I'll do this. Let me put him Beal. Okay, so we put in Beal. You got about 5,800 uh, with Wall. Let's see here. With Wall, you got 5,600. So it comes comes down to a little bit of a preference there. We'll leave it open. We'll come back and we'll slot one of them in later. But that's about it for the Wizards. Moving on to the Sacramento Kings. Uh, we'll start out with guard. Nobody here really interests me other than the two obvious uh, De'Aaron Fox and Frank Mason. George Hill got ruled out for rest. Buddy Heald, I, I, I love Buddy Heald, but, I mean, these minutes, they trended up. They went from this, they trended up to the 30s, and then now they're trending back down, and I just, I can't play Buddy Heald. It's, it's, it's just too sporadic with whatever Dave Yeager thinks he's doing with his rotation. Um, Garrett Temple, also interesting. Um, he played uh, 28 minutes last time. That was with uh, De'Aaron Fox out. He's he put up 27. He put up 18 real life points, uh, and it wasn't it was a good shooting, but it wasn't excessive. It was on 46 percent shooting. He went he only went two for seven from three, uh, so he becomes an interesting option at 3600. Maybe more of a Fanduel play over there where you got to play two shooting guards uh, than the DraftKings play, but still someone to keep an eye on. Uh, Justin Jackson, I would assume, will get the start tonight. Um, he played 14 minutes, uh, uh, or not the start. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, Vince Carter started the last game, but I think it was just a send-off, uh, for Toronto. He played 25 minutes in that game, which I was kind of shocked at. The 32 minutes here against New Orleans is also just a shock. I, I don't really know. Vince Carter's minutes are another level of weird. That's why I don't trust, that's why I don't like playing the Kings, but I will play De'Aaron Fox and, uh, Frank Mason. They're gonna play, 
and so I guess we'll put them into this lineup because they're the they're the top value in my opinion. So we'll put them we'll put them in. Okay, really, I gotta go shooting guard to put them in. All right, Frank Mason, I'll put him in. So small forward. Um, we'll get to that later. We get to the forwards for the uh, for the Kings. Uh, pretty much zero interest in me. I guess you could go to Willie Colley Stein, but I don't know how they're going to play their bigs. Is it going to be Colley Stein Randolph? Is it going to be Colley Stein Labissiere? Is it going to be Randolph um, Costa Kufis? I, I it's it's just too much. Is it going to be Papa Giannis? I I'm not messing with it. I'm not playing Zebo either at 6400. Um, he's been pretty consistent, but I don't know. If, I I just I'm not going there tonight. Um, there's some value and I just don't know what they're doing if he's playing 24 minutes I mean he can crush in that but I'm I'm not gonna bank on him crushing at 2400 so we're done with the Kings uh that's about all I have to say on them moving on to the Sixers start off with the guards Ben Simmons great cash option he exploded last night uh for 55 points almost posted that triple double came up one assist short which would have boosted them to 60 uh points so um that's, that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, he didn't get any steals. He's one of those guys that actually can put up a monster steal game, like these six against Phoenix and five against Boston. It's kind of against uh, lazier point guards that tend to turn the ball over, um, like like Russ put, turns the ball over a lot. He got four steals then. He got six steals against the Suns, who aren't very good. He got five steals against Kyrie, who does a lot of drives. Um I'm assuming that was Tim Frazier, Tomas Sadoransky that he got those steals against. Against more guards that protect the ball, um, he tends to not get the steals. Like Jeff Teague protects the ball. Rondo protects the ball. Um, uh, Lonzo. Lonzo turns the ball over, but not a ton. Reggie Jackson. This was kind of a surprise. But, um, yeah, the guys that tend to take care of the ball a little bit more, um, he tends to not get as many steals uh, against. Um, not that... I, I'm saying point guards because some of the, like, Russ will throw some balls into the middle trying to find Steven Adams or trying to find uh, Paul George, stuff like that, and, and they'll get picked off. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Not that Ben Simmons is guarding the point guard all the time. Um, so he's an interesting play. I don't know if I will go there on the back-to-back. -back. The guy that I want to go to is the guy who sat out the back-to-back. -back. Uh, so I'll get to him in a second. J.J. Redick, interesting option, but shooters on a back-to-back -back is kind of a no-no, but... I don't know. He didn't shoot great yesterday to begin with, and he didn't shoot a lot yesterday. That's something that that's, that's interesting to me because he didn't shoot a lot yesterday. Um, so maybe he'll chuck up the shots today, but Embiid is back, so it's interesting. That was his lowest shot total since Detroit on the second, uh, but he's seeing double-digit shot attempts every game. I mean, if you look, there's not a single one that's not double digits since as far back as I can see. Um, and so he's pretty safe. He's been pretty safe. He's had a nice floor, and so I will probably be rolling J.J. Redick, but I'm not entirely sure just yet. You're running out of guard spots and stuff like that tonight, so it gets a little bit interesting there. TLC had a big game last night with some steals. Uh, he, I thought he had more than one steal. Maybe they got it wrong and someone else had the steal. Um, I was watching the live game on NBA TV, and I just had this the game cast up on ESPN, so maybe that's what it was. They gave the wrong steal to him, but I thought he had a bigger game than that. But TLC always an interesting option. He gets some. He gets. He's he's an interesting GPP option because he gets like random minutes here and there. Uh, TJ McConnell had a big game last night, but I'm not gonna go back to him. He had 27 and a half for 4200, and a nice value, but nothing crazy. Uh, moving on to the forwards, uh, Bob Covington coming in at 6200. Um, I always love playing Bob Covington. Um, he has a pretty safe floor, as you can see. Uh, around 30 points is his floor and that's about what he needs to hit 5x value so he's always an interesting play uh don't think i'll have to go to him today on today's slate but uh like always he's an interesting uh, play he does get a lot of steals um he doesn't necessarily need him to get there but he does need some steals and blocks but he does get there with the uh, steals and blocks I, he's also a guy always attempting double digit shots last night a little bit of an outlier <laughs> only attempted five shots uh but Bob Covington, another interesting option. Dario Saric came up huge last night for me. Once again, I'll go over that. He put up 43 points. Uh, he went absolutely massive in the fourth quarter. Um, he, I, he was 7-1-1 one one in the first half, and he only played 12 minutes. So if you think, he played 19 second half minutes. He played the whole. He played 11 minutes of the third quarter, and then he played 
eight minutes of the fourth quarter, and the final, like, four minutes of the fourth quarter, he hit a three, he got two rebounds, he got two layups, he had an assist, um, he just went absolutely ham late in that game, he had a steal, uh, and so Saric put up 43 for me, I'm not sure if I'm going to go back to him, but he's another guy, like Bob Covington, he just feels safe, and it's another one of those things where it's kind of like, do you just pile these guys in that feel kind of safe tonight, and ride it out. Um, since I'm going a little bit GPP heavy, I'll go, you just kind of lock in De'Aaron Fox, Frank Mason, and then pile in the safe guys, it almost feels like. Uh, moving on to Cleveland, we got LeBron James, 11-6, tops the slate in price. Um, LeBron is averaging 53 points against the uh, Bucks, which isn't going to get it done at this price. You're going to need these games. You're going to need vintage LeBron. Uh, getting you into the 60s, but he's getting into the 60s pretty much. Last time he didn't get into the 60s was against the Bulls, in which he didn't play his full minutes because they blew him out. Uh, the last game he didn't get there before that would be the Memphis game, um, which was just one game earlier, but still. Um, he's still good for 50, I think. I think he's about as safe as you can get in cash. Um, I don't know. I don't... I don't... I play LeBron a lot, but I'm always like, yeah, I kind of wish I would have. Like, I feel like most nights LeBron is going to get you 60, but he's not going to be the highest scoring guy is the issue. Like, he's going to get you your 60, 65, 68, but then there's going to be one guy, one stud that outscores him, and it's kind of like one of those give and take things. Do you want to take the safety of LeBron, or do you want to try to figure out who's going to beat him? Um, and so it gets interesting. You know what? I skipped one thing on the Sixers. I'll go back here. We have Joel Embiid tonight. I, I forget because he's only center eligible. Um, so Joel Embiid, uh, 9,900, needs about 55 to hit my personal value, and he's been doing that. He's going to need a high amount of points. That's my only issue. He's going to need 30 points-ish. And I don't know. I, I, I probably will just skip Embiid uh, and play a LeBron or something like that. It's not that much more to get to LeBron, so I'll probably just end up with Embiid. But Embiid... Uh, 9,900, decent value. It's a pace down game for the Sixers. The Kings play the 26th slowest pace, but they also have the 26th ranked defense against centers. Uh, and so that's two things to, to kind of keep in mind. But I probably won't go to Embiid, but he's he's an intriguing option. So back to the Cavs. Let's get back to the Cavs. Can I deselect them? Okay, so... Moving on from LeBron, we have Kevin Love, one of my favorite plays tonight, and he will go into this lineup. We'll go ahead and put Kevin Love into the lineup. Let's go ahead and put him at the power forward. Put Kevin Love there. So Kevin Love, his average against the um, the Milwaukee Bucks this season is also 53 points, uh, as he has absolutely torched them. And he's absolutely been crushing. Uh, take out the Utah game, kind of an outlier. Um He's been absolutely crushing, um, getting to the 30s, getting to the double doubles. Um, he needs that double double to really crush, but he's been he needs to get 20 points and 10 rebounds really t to make you happy. You played him, uh, knock down a couple of threes, and so Kevin Love, highly interested in Kevin Love, probably makes my cash team tonight, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on to the guy the, to the guards, Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade. Um, He's, I don't think he's actually going to be out tonight. He should be back. I don't know why they have the out tag for him, but he should be back tonight. Uh, he's under 5K, which always makes uh, it interesting for a D-Wade. Um, I probably won't go there, but it's an interesting price point. Uh, definitely someone you should probably take a, at least a brief look at, but if nothing else, um, know that he's in, uh, most likely, unless he gets ruled out here. Um... I'm not going to play any of the J.R. Smith, Jose Calderon, Kyle Korver, C.D. Uzman type. I'm, not, I'm just not going there. Uh, Tristan Thompson isn't going to get the mo I believe he's still in a 15-minute 15 uh, 15 minute, uh, restriction, and so I'm not going to go there. So it's pretty much LeBron and Love, and, and you go from there. Uh, moving on to the Bucks. Uh, we've got the guards. we got Chris Middleton, who's going to go into this lineup as well. Put him at the small forward. Uh, he goes. He fits very nicely into a balanced lineup. Uh, he's another one of those guys, pretty safe for his floor of 35. He's gonna get there, um, as you can see. He's gonna. He's gonna. Get, he's gonna get you his 35. Tony Snell being out helps him even more. Snell is questionable. He went through shoot around and all that, so I expect him to play. But I still love uh, Chris Middleton. 
Uh, you can't read too much into it, but Bledsoe has averaged around 52 points, I believe, against the Cavs the last three t three games he's played against them, but none of them were with the Bucks. Uh, so that kind of limits what you can do, um, exactly what he's, what am I trying to say? It kind of limits, oh boy, what am I trying to say? It limits um, some of the data points that you can use, but the Cavs do get killed by wings, and so keep that in mind. Wing, I guess wings is not the proper terms because LeBron, the small forward, does guard decently well. Uh, he doesn't get killed, so I guess let me take that back. The guards get killed. Uh, moving on to forward, Giannis comes in at 200 cheaper than LeBron. Uh, I, Giannis is my preferred play over LeBron. I think he tops him on the slate, but uh, obviously, if you look at the game logs, LeBron's much safer, I think. Uh, Giannis will get you 50. He's going to get you 50 tonight, but uh, LeBron's probably going to get you 60 as a guarantee. So it just comes down to, do you want to take the risk to see if Giannis can get you 70 in a prime matchup, or do you want to just take LeBron's safety? Something like that. So that's just my opinion on Giannis. He's a good play. You don't need to have me tell you he's a good play. I, I have no interest in John Henson. I mean, he's going to play. He can put you out. He can give you 30. He can give you 30, but I i don't know. I just don't like playing John Henson. I mean, you can put him in this line, and it gives you about 7,500 left, which creates some interesting things you can do at guard and forward in this line, uh, or utility and forward. So if you do this, that's all I want to talk about on the Bucks. So I'll take a look at this real quick. So if you look at the forwards, you can come down here to a guy like Ben Simmons, and that gives you 5,600 at utility. Come down here, and you can get a guy like J.J. Redick. Uh, that's, that creates a very balanced lineup, kind of. Uh, you get a Drew Holiday, and you get a Kevin Love, you get a Chris Middleton in there. You get three kind of mid-tier strong guys. You get a you get a Ben Simmons who can put up 60 points at 9,500. You get J.J. Redick, a little bit of a correlation because Ben Simmons to J.J. Redick. Uh, you get the correlation in the Kings and the Philly game right here. You get the Milwaukee-Cleveland kind of uh, fade of LeBron and Giannis and Hope Middleton and Love go crazy. Uh, and then you get a little bit of the action in the other game with the Drew Holiday. So that's an interesting lineup to me. But guys, obviously things change. Like last night with the Goran Dragic news, I did not think he would be out. And he ended up being out. So as always, things came. Keep, in, keep your eye up on news. If you want to know a follow, I follow personally Basket Monster. Um, you can follow Fantasy Labs as well. But Bask Monster is the one that I turn to for all of my updates. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and keep your eyes out for uh, the video breaking down my lineup last night as well as taking a first look at NFL. So peace out, guys.